Hello, I'm Arjen, the common sense quantum physicist. My goal is to develop intuitive approaches to quantum physics. In a first sequence about the polarization of light, we saw that quantum particles, and particularly those composing light, the photons, are best represented by spinning, little spinning objects like arrows, needles or rods. This time we'll look at how we may characterize the physics of arrows. A famous physicist, Paul Dirac, in this reference book, The Principles of Quantum Mechanics, proposed to call them cat vectors, or simply cats, K-E-T, and denote a general one of them by a special symbol, vertical bar greater than sign. If we want to specify a particular one of them by a label, A say, we insert it in the middle, thus vertical bar A greater than sign. So a cat is nothing more than a rotating arrow. Well, nearly nothing more. Physicists perform operating rules on it. These rules tell us how an arrow is transformed into another arrow. These rules also tell us that you may add the arrows in order to get another arrow, or multiply them, or subtract them, one from another. Let me present some of these operations. Firstly, there is the operation where the arrow is rotated by an angle alpha. We multiply cat A by a so-called complex number to describe this rotation exponential i alpha. So when you see a complex number in quantum mechanical expressions, it is real physics. It simply means that cat A has undergone a rotation in its spinning surface. Secondly, you may add arrows by positioning them head to tail and then imagining the resultant arrow. So this arrow A plus this arrow B equals that arrow C. Subtracting is easy. You just imagine the arrow pointing towards the other side. So subtract, subtracting cat B from cat A is the same as adding arrow minus B to arrow A. And this gives arrow D. Multiplying by a real number is also easy. 2 multiplied by arrow A just means A plus A. And 0 0.5 times arrow A is just the operation that halves the arrow A. So, now that we know how to compute with arrows, let us describe an ordinary situation. For example, the rotating motion of this arrow. We already saw that the equation arrow B is exponential I times alpha times arrow A just means that in order to obtain arrow B well arrow A has been rotated by an angle alpha. <coughs> if we know the constant angular speed at which this arrow spins we could replace the angle alpha by the expression angular speed omega times interval of time. So we could also say arrow B equates exponential i times angular speed omega times difference between the final time and the initial time that multiplies the arrow A. This is the time evolution for a freely spinning arrow. However, this is valid only for arrows that spin with a constant angular speed. So this equation has a very limited domain of validity. In real life, a rotating linear object is generally subject to various forces. This arrow in my hand is subject to the forces of my hand. 
So how could we describe the physics in the general case? Well, the trick is to look at very tiny intervals of time, which we call differential of time, and we write it dt. After a very tiny interval of time, the arrow A is rotated over a very tiny angle. That angle has then the measure omega times dt. The difference between two very close positions of arrow A is also a differential. Remember the head to tail rule. It is the little arrow dA that is obtained by subtracting the initial A from the subsequent A. But there is another way to write the little, little arrow dA. Imagine the time interval going to the limit 0. Then the tiny arrow dA makes an angle of 90 degrees with A. That's always the case. This means that you may obtain the arrow dA from A not only by subtraction, but also through a rotation of 90 degrees and the reduction of the arrow by the proportionality factor instantaneous angular speed omega times dt. That's just multiplying arrow A by that factor. Well, you may have learned at high school that exponential i 90 degrees is the same as the imaginary i. So we may write in compact form dA is i omega dt times the arrow A which is the generalized form of Schrödinger's time-dependent equation. Physicists generally multiply both terms of this equation by a fundamental constant h-bar and reverse the time direction. This equation just describes common sense physics of ordinary arrow-like objects, for which the rotational speed at the tips of the arrow makes an angle of 90 degrees with the arrow. Now when you ride your bicycle, remember the spokes of your wheel just obey the Schrödinger equation. Next time we'll look at how arrow-like objects interact